Hi again. In this video, I will be playing as Dravi Danadu, an Indian releasable. I will reunite India, then try to pick a fight against a player, because, content. I immediately turned into a nationalist, as for some reason, get 500 free political power instead of the usual 100. They don't get any extra free manpower or technology though, which is interesting. I built the factories, because I still get the starting 100 million. Since India is such a populated country, both in real life and in Rise of Nations, this releasable is one of the strongest in the game. I have 50 million people, so manpower isn't a problem. Dravida Nadu is also one of the few releasables to have a formable. It's called Kola Dynasty, and I just need Sri Lanka and Maldives for it. In the meantime, I was justifying on everything around me. What's impressing is that India remained the third strongest country after losing half the land and 20% of its population. Anyway, I'm currently training troops for the Sri Lankan jungle. I got a decent industry set up too, with consumers and everything. China was AI, so I was hoping I won't have that much competition in Southeast Asia. Anyway, here's Kola Dynasty. Now I have some cores on Sri Lanka and I got 5 more stability. I got to work creating a navy, because India has a good position from which I can deploy my troops and navy to the Middle East, East Africa, or Southeast Asia. I was also using it to deal damage to the Bangladeshi troops, so that I don't have to spend much manpower and time to reinforce my units. I started taking Bangladesh. Dhaka is an enormous city, which makes it difficult to capture. What I generally do is, after baiting the troops, I use make a capture zone that covers all of Bangladesh except Dhaka, then force piece it. There's a city right under Dhaka. So you have to move over Dhaka to capture that city, then remove your troops to prevent them from getting dealt more damage from trying to take Dhaka. I started preparing to go to war against India now. 130,000 troops were in my territory, so I made some artillery to damage kill them before they took the city. I also made a submarine because there were 200,000 troops in the water around the Maldives. I also plan on slowly killing the troops in Mumbai and Kolkata using the two destroyers I built earlier. After the preparations were done, I started the war. India is a democracy, which means they make a lot of money. I plan on using the money to integrate it as fast as possible, then develop cities using what's left. That way, I can become a superpower really quick. Here's a time lapse of me invading India.
As you can see Vietnam isn't looking too good. Basically, Vietnam attacked Thailand. And Thailand joined America's faction. At some point, UK and France ended up fighting USA and half the players in the game, who were also in the faction. Now, since China isn't a player, I thought I wouldn't have competition in Southeast Asia. Vietnam was no match for me, I could easily take them out. However, now that USA was getting involved in the area, I knew I have to intervene against USA at some point. I'm not in a position to do so right now, but once I can, I'll supply France and UK with money and manpower. Vietnam fell quickly. They barely had troops, I just sent everything on auto capture and won. Preparations to invade USA were almost ready. I allied France too, but then USSR started making troops to invade on a weakened France. I sent France some manpower and money to build a defensive line. By now, preparations to go to war against USA were done, so I decided to attack USA instead of USSR, and just offer aid for France to hold USSR back. I asked France to add me to the USA war. I didn't realize this during the game, but USA said this. I didn't know what a Dharma was, but apparently it's something Hindu or Buddhist related. And guess who the biggest Hindu country is? Apparently, the white in the Indian flag represents Dharma. So this might be a threat aimed at me, but I'm still not sure. If you're Hindu or Buddhist and I messed something up, I'm sorry. Why aren't they adding me? This is ridiculous. Finally, they added me. I had 5,000 tanks ready for them. I started getting rid of the 160,000 troops they had in. Wait a second. Did they really just white peace? Well I guess, USSR it is. I made a large navy because I was going to have to escort my troops through water. However, the Suez Canal was owned by Saudi Arabia and they blocked my access, so I had to make a detour. I took a few cities, and they were willing to give me the Suez Canal as long as I didn't destroy their country. I sent my army off to the USSR. I can't make this stuff up. I was so close to landing. I'm in a $7 million deficit because my entire army is in the water. I'm going to take Malta and put my army there I guess. I think Tunisia needs it to form Carthage, but that's fine, I'll give it to them later. Oh wait. So Koto Caliphate is at war with UK to kick them out of Africa. I don't really care about South Africa or UK, or anyone else for that matter. But at this point, I just want to fight someone. This time, I'm going to declare for myself, so that nobody can white peace. Their navy and air force are larger than mine, but they're in West Africa, and they'll take a long time to get to their east coast, which is where I'm invading from. Once I land my troops, it will be over for them. I landed the 5,000 troops originally intended for USSR in Sudan. I made even more tanks, and they're going to land in Kenya. Their east coast isn't defended much compared to the west. So if I auto-capture I can easily take out a large chunk of them. My tanks were running over his infantry. They still had half a million troops in Sudan and Kenya but they weren't even a challenge. Just in case they somehow made a comeback or, to make sure I finished them off, I made more tanks. I was actually surprised at how fast I was advancing myself. Their air force was annoying, and I had nothing to counter it, so they kept slowly chipping away at my troops with their attackers. I grabbed a few troops and grouped them up. After they heal, I'm going to simply rush Abuja, and that would basically be it. Abuja didn't stand a chance. They sent me a treaty ceding their entire country to me for some reason. So yeah, now I own all of Africa. Well, I guess that's it for today. If you want to see the crazy story of how I formed Roman Empire, that's here.